Welcome back everyone. For today's preparation, 40 grams of sodium hydroxide, 30 grams of acid washed quartz sand and hydrochloric acid. We used 37% hydrochloric acid were used. We then started off by weighing out the sodium hydroxide followed by weighing out the quartz sand. This sort of sand has a higher purity and a higher silicon dioxide content than normal sand. The blender was closed and the powders were slightly rotated and shaken to mix them. Afterwards they were blended. Why are we doing this? Well, by blending we pulverize all of the particles and we get a really good mix and this is going to increase the efficiency of the next step. The silicon dioxide sodium hydroxide mixture was added to the steel can. An aluminium container couldn't be used as it would simply melt in the following step. The solids really don't like to react just as they are, therefore a lot of heat is needed. I am not going to use my electrical furnace but my coal furnace because I want to use it again. With coal as always it takes a long time until it's finally lit up but it's definitely worth it. Here you can see how hot it actually gets. We let it react for about 10 minutes before taking it out. It is very hot in the furnace but it's not hot enough. To make the reaction even more efficient we are going to blow in some propane to get it even hotter. Do you see all of those sparks flying out? This is because we introduced the propane and this leads to a very small explosion in the beginning. The reaction should be the following. Sodium hydroxide reacts with silicon dioxide to form disodium silicate and water. After some time had passed we simply took out the reaction can. It is impossible to react all of the sand with the sodium hydroxide at these temperatures because even higher temperatures would be needed to completely fuse them together. Anyways, we took the mixture out of the container, added it to a beaker, added some distilled water, let it sit for 2 hours and afterwards filtered it. A lot of sand will be left behind and a lot of sodium hydroxide is in solution as you can see here because it's strongly alkaline. I hope that the sodium hydroxide didn't dissolve the filter but it worked out just fine. The solution was black because a lot of the iron from the steel can was dissolved from iron hydroxide or some stuff like that. Next we are going to add hydrochloric acid. This should form silicic acid and later on silicon dioxide. I'm not going to use any specific amount of hydrochloric acid because I don't know how much disodium silicate is in solution. I normally wanted to add hydrochloric acid until the pH was neutral but I ended up not doing that and only added hydrochloric acid until something interesting happened. The next addition of hydrochloric acid led to the following. The solution first turned clear and later on solidified into this strange gel. The reason it turned clear was probably that the dark iron hydroxide or whatever it has been was turned into the much less colorful iron chloride. The gel is either silicic acid or silicon dioxide. I decided to test pH and it was still strongly alkaline because the pH strip turned dark blue. The silt water was added in an attempt to get rid of as much of the sodium hydroxide as possible. A gravity filtration was performed. In order to dry it the gel was transferred to this large beaker. I wanted to dry it in the microwave at first but I microwaved it for 10 minutes and it still wasn't dry enough. For this reason we dumped it onto a towel and let it air dry. To actually show you that we made silica gel, I dried it in a vacuum over an hydrous calcium chloride again. Silica gel should keep at least some water in it and we can prove that by heating it up. If you liked this video make sure to like and if you don't want to miss out on further chemistry content make sure to subscribe. I might also do some organic chemistry this week so stay tuned for that one. Bye.